this is the movie Marvel had to make work. Picking up immediately at the end of Far From Home, Spider-Man's identity has now been made public and Peter is on the run from the world trying to live a balanced life of fighting crime, dating MJ, and proving his innocence in Mysterio's death. This juggling act becomes too much for Peter and he asks Doctor Strange to cast a spell to wipe Spider-Man's identity from everyone's memory. Strange then explains that every single person on Earth, with exception of Peter, will forget who he is. Then, in a moment of panic, Peter interrupts the spell, which results in a tearing of the fabric of space and time, bringing different villains to the MCU, like Dr. Octopus, the Lizard, and others. Now, Peter has to figure out how to juggle all his responsibilities with these new villains, Doctor Strange, and the botched spell. First, the most important thing in this film is the characters. 90% is handled well. I would have been livid had Octavius been mishandled, because Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man, and I adore it. So when the film said he'd be back, I barreled down the street at high speed, crashed into the theater, demanded to know, is Octavius handled with care? And then other people said, yes he is! And then there was much rejoicing. With so many characters, it is hard to balance them. Some receive more focus than others. For example, the Lizard is just kind of there, while Electro gets more of a discussion of whether or not to keep his powers. Even one of the heroes that appears receives the redemption he so needed after the laughable conclusion of his last film. Amazingly, the large cast here is juggled almost as well as Infinity War with the writing staff's understanding of these different characters. While not perfect, I am impressed by that. Shit, the biggest character arc is Zendaya's eyebrow because she no longer does that stupid 50-yard squint. I almost gave the film a standing ovation for that one. There is also a mature reservation of possible jokes that could have happened but didn't. For example, there is a scene that would have been perfect for the Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man meme but didn't happen because the film is actually pretty tonally consistent. Now, not every one or thing is handled well. This is where the lead counterweights come in, as it were. Doctor Strange is by far the biggest problem in the movie. He and the rules of magic. Strange has been shown to be so intelligent that he has the forethought to look through 14 plus million different timelines to figure out how to beat Thanos, but wasn't smart enough to ask Peter about parameters for the Men in Black spell, or explain what the spell will do or who it will affect before casting it. Furthermore, apparently magic has no effect on Spider-Man unless the plot wants it to. At one point, Peter is separated from his body like Strange was in his own movie. Now, unlike Strange, Peter can swim back to his body despite the forceful separation separation of body and spirit? Yeah, but Strange did it in his movie. Yeah, except Strange was an accomplished sorcerer by that point, when at the beginning of the film, he obviously couldn't because he wasn't. And his soulless body is dodging Strange's, reaching for the spell on a box? For some reason, magic has no consistency here, and I don't appreciate that. On top of this, there is some, and I mean SOME, dialogue that drags on like the Ghostbusters film that never happened. How dare you make that comparison? No, this is a fair observation, and I said only only some of the dialogue drags on with no real purpose. Beyond that, the majority of the writing is solid. Oh, yeah, and Sandman is wasted here. Spider-Man No Way Home is a decent film, and is the only thing Marvel has produced worth watching in the last almost five years. It is leagues above any of the recent films or the shows, and I wouldn't wipe my ass with any of those scripts. The characters were handled mostly well, with only some a little lacking. The action is fine, and there was a lot of heart where it counted, with this Spider-Man very arguably making the biggest and greatest sacrifice of all of the Spider-Man films prior. On the other hand, there are a number of significant world-building choices that need to be addressed before this franchise continues, otherwise there will be plot holes so big you could fit your mom through them. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of the wasted potential that is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City at the link over there. And I'll see you in the next video.